I am Teodoro Bottiglieri. I am a scientist at Baylor Scott and White Research Institute. I work in the Center of Metabolomics and Institute of Metabolic Disease. Um, my uh, area of interest is in homocysteine metabolism, and uh, also uh, I'm here today to talk about uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase and THFR deficiency. What is the MTHFR gene and what does it do? Well, let me start by saying what MTHFR stands for. It's an abbreviation that stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. And, and that's kind of a, a lengthy uh, name, but that is uh, exactly what it is. It's actually a gene that contains the code that transcribes the protein, which is methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, MTHFR. Um, this protein is critical for metabolizing one form of uh, B vitamins, which is folate, it's actually vitamin B9 is folate, which we obtain from our food. And this step of conversion of folate uh, is important because it uh, is involved in the conversion of folate into a form called methylfolate, which is transported into cells and across the blood brain barrier. So this is a very critical uh, step in the function of folate in the body. In addition, this, um, so this gene which codes for this protein uh, has a very specific function and it's, uh, as I said, it's very important. Uh, it's important for not only the transport of folate to, to, to get it into the cells, but also to uh, cause the breakdown of homocysteine, which is a toxic amino acid, and it works to uh, primarily to function in lowering homocysteine levels in the circulation and in cells. So could you tell us why homocysteine is toxic? Yes, um, homocysteine is a sulfur amino acid, which is very reactive. And it's been studied for many decades now uh, because we know that it is toxic to uh, vascular, well, it's toxic to all cells in the body but it is particularly toxic to vascular cells. That's the cells that line the vessels, uh, the blood vessels. And then it's also very toxic. It's particularly toxic to neuronal cells. So as a result of increased levels of homocysteine in the blood, uh, this produces a number of different reactions which uh, adversely affect both vascular function and also neurological and uh, function in the, you know, the function in the brain. So uh, over the last, as I mentioned, over the last uh, four or five decades, we've been studying homocysteine. Uh, and more recently, in the last decade, you know, we have amassed uh, quite a bit of information in understanding exactly how homocysteine affects these cells and ways to uh, prevent that toxicity. But at the base of it, um, the uh, MTFR, MTHFR gene is critical in uh, keeping homocysteine levels low, and it does this by maintaining uh, levels of folate uh, at adequate uh, levels in the blood and, and in cells. So we hear a lot about different types of MTHFR uh, changes, both, both common and severe. Can you explain how these differences occur? You are, you're correct. There are different ways in which the MTHFR deficiency can present. And one of them is in this rare form, which, uh, well, rare, it occurs, it's a very rare occurrence. Um, and this uh, can, is usually picked up very early on in life in a newborn, and sometimes it can be picked up on newborn screening. And there are about 40 different variants or different types of mutations that can cause uh, anywhere from 95% to 100% inactivation of that MTHFR enzyme. When that occurs, uh, the levels of homocysteine in the blood are, uh, are grossly elevated. So we, we see levels that can be very, very high and uh, they, they can easily be screened and be be detected in that way. Um, obviously, then we have to go on and confirm from genetic analysis whether they have that rare form or not. Um, but those rare forms uh, do cause um, quite dramatic clinical symptoms. In, 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 and as I said, it's usually picked up in a newborn. We see it very early on in life. 
And these may include global developmental delays, failure to thrive, seizures, they can have ataxia, which is loss of control of their limbs and peripheral neuropathy, and they have also vessel disease, they can have vessel disease. So that is one, one way in which the MTHFR deficiency can present and be, be, be seen. Um, now, there are milder forms of the deficiency which occur from what we call SMPs. Now, SMPs are single nucleotide polymorphisms, and these are just uh, little mutations or mutations that occur in that MTHFR gene that causes just a mild uh, effect, or sometimes a mild, sometimes a little bit more, but um, there, are, there are various vari variants there that occur. Now, one of them, which uh, is, is commonly known, is the C677T mutation. And that is 677 uh, denotes the position where that mutation occurs. And uh, if you, uh, have uh, you have two strands of DNA so you can carry two copies of the gene and if you have uh, both copies that are defective you would be homozygous and that is uh, a more severe uh, or that causes a, a larger decrease in the enzyme function uh, so you can either be one of three genotypes you can either be wild type heterozygous or homozygous so you are either cc CT or TT. Um, now, this has also been studied. This uh, this polymorphism has been studied quite uh, extensively because the uh, prevalence of the homozygous form, which can cause up to a seventy percent loss in enzyme function, uh, its prevalence is about uh, twelve to fourteen percent in the Caucasian population and it can be as high as 24% in Hispanics and uh, Mediterranean populations. So it, it is fairly prevalent in our population, uh, but the good news is, is that um, even if you have this mutation, it really presents as, uh, it, the, the symptoms can, that, that present with, with this mutation is, can be very mild. Uh, it, it can be more problematic if you're in, in a situation where you are also deficient in folate in your diet or you're taking drugs that can either affect the metabolism of folate or its uh, absorption into the body. Could you tell us what kind of symptoms might be caused by the more common variants we might hear more about than the rare type? Yes. Um, the, it's been studied, as mentioned, it's been studied, this polymorphism, uh, the C677 T, has been studied quite um, extensively in various different populations. And what we see is that there is a strong association with vascular disease, such as uh, coronary artery disease, particularly also with this is ischemic stroke, with hypertension, and also venous thrombosis. Now, there is also uh, a strong association with pregnancy and infertility. So uh, we see this as a risk factor for recurrent pregnancy loss, preeclampsia, and also for neural tube defects, uh, such as spina bifida. Now, um, one of the uh, pieces of research that came out from this was showing that this uh, polymorphism is associated with ne neural tube defects, and that is why our, uh, primarily why our food uh, is been fortified, uh, is mandatorily fortified with folic acid uh, because the folic acid in our food can overcome some of the uh, adverse effects that this polymorphism is associated with. And uh, what we have seen since our food has been fortified uh, and it, you know, we, we, we get a source of folic acid through that means since 1998, we have seen a 60 to 70% reduction in neural tube defects. So uh, that's been one of the uh, good positive things that has come out from all this research and, and understanding of MTHFR. Having said that, um, MTHFR is also associated with a number of neurological and psychiatric disorders, such as dementia, depression, bipolar disease, schizophrenia, and in some studies also in uh, autism. 
Could you tell us what testing is available for MTHFR and how an individual or family who has a concern about the MTHFR gene could get more information? Well, MTHFR can be tested by a number of different laboratories. I mean, it's, this is something now which is almost becoming standard in a way. Um, major genetic testing laboratories such as Quest, LabCorp, and ARUP, they will do this type of testing um, as long as it's been requested by a physician. So you always have to go through a physician in order to get the request for the test. Um, having said that, uh, there are companies that will um, accept, I mean, if you can get a result on an MTHFR uh, C677T genotype uh, from 23andMe. Um, part of that is in that whole uh, package that you get when you send your uh, sample off for analysis to that company. Um, but generally, you know, if you want to really get it done, you know, in a very, um, you know, in, 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 you know and, and discuss it with uh, with your physician, that's probably the best option to to go through that way. Now, some laboratories will and testing centers will um, perform the test from DNA that's extracted from blood. Others will do it from saliva, and others will also do it from buccal swabs, from a cheek swab. So there are various and and. As there are some laboratories that will even do it from a, a, and we've done it in our laboratory, from a finger stick. So a few drops of blood on a card is sufficient to extract the DNA and do this type of testing. Now, the more severe forms are usually done, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a more, uh, you know, it, 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 by these larger companies that do uh, exome sequencing and they're looking at various different variants and they're looking for uh, other causes are usually of elevated homocysteine, which is really the flag here uh, for going to uh, look at that MTHFR uh, mutation and seeing if you have that mutation. Now, for the milder forms, I want to emphasize that, you know, getting a result back that you are perhaps, you know, you, you may have this TT genotype, which is the homozygote form, which has up to a 70% decrease in activity, and it's been associated with all these um, various different diseases, vascular, neurological, pregnancy, and infertility, that it is really a risk factor, and that we have to take into account other things as well, our diet, lifestyle, um, and so that's why it's always important to discuss the result with a physician or a trained geneticist who can explain the best way um, uh, in, in the best, uh, in, in, you know, what, what's the best uh, way to uh, understand how this mutation, if you have it, may affect you. It's possible to also look for homocysteine in the blood, which is another way of uh, knowing if you have um, some metabolic effects that are occurring as a result of that MTHFR deficiency. And that is quite often done as well in combination with the DNA testing, uh, because you really want to know, uh, you know, and sometimes a homocysteine, well, let me say, sometimes a, an elevated homocysteine can be a flag, it can indicate that there is a problem at that gene level, but there are other mutations that can occur in the folate pathway that can also cause high homocysteine levels. So it really needs um, some careful evaluation uh, to do very specific testing uh, for what may be causing an elevated homocysteine, whether you have MTHFR uh, deficiency or if you have some other uh, either genetic or metabolic problem that's, that's given you this uh, initial result that's you know, causing you to search further.